I jump in here because I want to, I mean, the important thing, I think the operative word is context. I think everybody here acknowledges everyone here who's Christian, uh, maybe not Andrew and, uh, and Adam, but everyone here who's Christian would affirm that there is nothing, as you say, per se, anti-Semitic or problematic about saying Christ is king. It's a fact. But to the point, so really the, the operative word is context. In what context is being used? I think that's a point you're making. That's a point that Clavin made. What I'm interested in is everyone's focusing on whether Christ is King is anti-Semitic. But what was a little bit more shocking to me in what Andrew Clavin said was about Ben Shapiro. And he said that he would not wish Shapiro to become Christian because if Shapiro became Christian, it would cause devastation to himself and everybody in his life. And he almost seemed to suggest like that we shouldn't try to convert Shapiro, like to come on to him in this way and say, you should be Christian, Christ is king. Even in the context of evangelizing, Clavin seemed to push back on that and say, uh, actually, God put Shapiro where he needs to be and doesn't and doesn't want Shapiro to be Christian, doesn't want Shapiro to say Christ is king because he's, you know, pushing family values or something in his station as uh, head of Daily Wire or rather as the head pundit on Daily Wire. So I'm wondering, do you agree with that? What is your position on what Clavin said? Because to me, that I think that's the important context when he said that Christ is king is anti-Semitic. And I think a lot of Christians were offended by that. I think it's a bit of a misrepresentation of what Drew said, though I will uh, acknowledge that Drew is often more clear because he's often more prepared. He went on the air that day and spoke from the heart, which isn't always what he does. He's usually more prepared than that. Uh, Drew, and, and also I want to be clear that Andrew Clavin can speak for himself and he's not here. But knowing Andrew Clavin and knowing his relationship with Ben Shapiro and knowing uh, a lot about his uh, theological outlook, having read his, his book, The Great Good Thing, about his own conversion, I think that it's fair to say that Drew was not implying that there is a, a way to the Father that doesn't go through the Son. I think that what he was saying is God is sovereign. He has people where he wants them. He has someone like Ben where he wants him. He has someone like uh, Jordan Peterson where he wants him. And Drew, my understanding of what Drew said is that Drew's belief is that God has them where he wants them and he'll get it sorted out. Uh, and that that's, I don't think Drew would, if he were here, I don't think that he would say that it's wrong uh, to evangelize Ben Shapiro any more than it's wrong to evangelize anyone else. That there's a, again, context matters. There's a, there's a way to evangelize someone that is useful and probably a way to evangelize someone that is not useful. But I don't think that Drew was trying to intimate that he believes that there is a path uh, to the Father that doesn't go through the Son. Obviously, salvation's a mystery. We're to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Uh, and, and Drew is a Christian. I mean, again, I would encourage anyone to read The Great Good Thing, his, Drew's book about his own uh, uh, journey to Christianity, which is as unique as Andrew Clavin himself is. Uh, but I understand why a person who listened to what Drew said on his podcast might have come away with the impression that he was suggesting that let's let's not invoke Ben, let's invoke Jordan Peterson here because it it sidesteps other issues that are that are contested on this particular conversation. But Jordan Peterson, uh, Drew is not suggesting that Jordan Peterson has a path to the Father that doesn't go through the Son. He's he's suggesting that uh, that. God is using Jordan Peterson where Jordan Peterson is, and that not everything is always exactly, not everything about how God works is always exactly obvious to us. Also, we live at a moment in linear time, and God takes a much different view probably than, uh, than we do. And I think that's fair to say since virtually, since there are no second generation Christians, and everyone on this space who is a Christian at some point was not a Christian. So I think that's what Drew was speaking to. Well, but he said specifically, and I'm not, you know, I'm just trying to ask the question here. He said specifically, because I just pulled up the quote, and I'm not trying to rip him apart because I do the same. I do a live stream. People take what I say out of context. Sometimes people that are friendly with you do this, but I'll be charitable and say, fair enough. If he was off the cuff, I get it. He said, if Ben were to embrace Jesus, it would cause devastation to his family, to the people who love him, to the people who listen to him, to his position in the world. Now, that's I know you just gave an explanation. You can't speak for him, obviously, but that's a pretty outrageous statement to say that 
I mean, literally, that's that's the quote. To embrace Jesus would cause devastation to his life and his position. I mean, certainly just on its face, the denotative meaning of those words, surely you would disagree with this, right? That it is always the right moment to embrace Christianity and that, like, obviously no, no devastation could come from embracing Jesus, right? I mean, do you agree with this? I know I'm not trying to say take a side against Flavin, but I mean, let's just say the words as they are, you would disagree with this, right? I I disagree that uh, that the denotative meaning meaning is the um, operative meaning in this setting. I don't have the transcript in front of me, but I recall that at the beginning of it, uh, Drew's actual opening statement about this particular issue did involve the primacy of Christ. Of course, I believe that devastation can come into people's lives when they embrace Christ. That devastation is worth it for the life that one has in Christ and for the freedom that one has in Christ. But of course, uh, Christ sets father against son and, and mother against daughter. And so obviously a lot of devastation comes into people's lives when they receive the gospel. I mean, you know, uh, Paul himself was shipwrecked and imprisoned and beaten and tormented. It's no, it's no, um, it's not child's play to become a Christian. But to the extent that you're saying that what Drew is is intimating is that now is a bad time for Ben to be a Christian because it would hurt his um, public position. I think that that's an uncharitable view of what Drew was likely saying, which is far more likely to be. Uh, Jordan is where Jordan is, and Ben is where Ben is, and God is doing what God is doing. And obviously, these issues are um, obviously the the issue of where a person is on their journey is a very complex one. But no, I don't believe if Drew were here today on this in this conversation that he would say that there's a bad time for someone to give their life to Christ. I think, and I'm just going to say this, and then other people can jump in. But I think. Uh, and I appreciate your, I think you um, I think you're giving a thoughtful response to this, but if I were to just rebut kind of the whole premise, I think it's very interesting that when it comes to saying Jesus is King, or when it comes to remarks that Candace has made or remarks that Ye has made, or even someone like myself has made, it seems like it's always the most uncharitable. It's always the motive is impugned, always extrapolate the worst possible idea or the worst possible intention. But when it comes to the people on your side, when Ben Shapiro says, well, uh, Jesus was a rebel that got killed for his trouble, hands up, don't nail. When Andrew Clavin says, well, Shapiro can't accept Jesus because it would cause devastation in his life. Well, we almost have to read into it the co like the contrary meaning, <laughs> like the connotative meaning or the intended meaning is like the opposite of what was said. So when it comes to people that talk about Israel or Jewish power or, you know, when they say Christ is king, well, they got to be super, super careful about how they say it. But if somebody says hands up, don't nail, when somebody says transfer is not a dirty word, which I'm sure you know what I'm talking about, when somebody says, you know, accepting Jesus is going to cause devastation, well, it's uncharitable to like read what they say. And I think that's kind of to the point of even what uh, somebody earlier was saying, which is this hypocrisy about cancel culture, you know, and I know I'm, you know, you're not these people, but Dave Rubin is to me the perfect example. As you know, the guy made his career saying, hey, I'm a liberal, but even though we disagree, we can have a conversation. Don't burn my book, this kind of thing. And then I have personal knowledge that when people step out of line on Israel, he makes calls. Now you may refute that. Other people may refute that. That is something I've heard. And of course he said on the Patrick Bed David show, uh, day after Candace Owens debated Barkley, he said, well, I don't consider Candace a friend anymore. And, you know, that's just the nature of the thing we're in. And it's like, I don't really know what that means because Ruben will have on socialist, communist, leftist, progressives, as well as many conservatives, and he'll be amicable towards them and, and nothing is off limits. But it does seem that one thing is off limits, and that's a thing that's very close to his heart. And that's the thing that's also intertwined with this business partner who's at Hebrew University and, and all these things. And I think what people are trying to say is that, like, it just seems like there's a great big double standard when it concerns Israel, Jews, uh, anything regarding those kinds of topics as pertains to cancel culture, the free marketplace of ideas, 
um, and, and everything else. I mean, so, I mean, just to be honest with you, cards on the table, I'm not trying to like interrogate you. I'm, I am actually listening to your response. That's how I feel. And that's kind of how I felt my whole career. Yeah. Cause last promise, last thing, you know, I used to be, I'm not saying this, like you're missing my $15 subscription or whatever, but like when I was a teenager, I was a huge fan of all you guys like Shapiro and like Clavin and even like Bill Whittle. I've been watching you guys since Truth Revolt and PJ Media. And I was putting out all those arguments. I mean, people be surprised to learn that I was like losing friends in high school because I was saying, hey, you know, Israel's fought off four wars of extermination. And, you know, they're the most moral army. There is the uh, beacon of democracy and a sea of barbarism. But then I started to notice as I got older, the peculiar nature of this, the special attention to Israel, the fact that there never seemed to be a criticism entertained, that that always fell outside the scope of the conversation. And then when I met people from Daily Wire and I asked them, I got rebuffed, I got shut down, I got canceled. And then people like Cassie Dillon, who has since converted away from Christianity to Judaism, which is apostasy, a great sin, she clips the show and sends it to Media Matters. So, I mean, you guys, and, and by the way, you say no one likes the ADL. Shapiro was reposting ADL after October 7th when Greenblatt went on and put everybody on MSNBC on blast because I think you guys don't have a problem with the ADL. You have a problem with Greenblatt because Greenblatt supports BLM and, you know, he's a left-wing partisan. So, you know, that's where I'm coming from. It's not a place of Jew hatred. It's just a place of, I mean, I'm America first. I'm a Christian. These other people, they lost me when they started canceling over Israel stuff and encouraging apostasy and or saying we can't convert to Christianity. There's this Judeo-Christian thing. You lost me because it's just not true. I think my only response to that would be that, uh, and, and I think I've spoken long enough on a spaces that I wasn't actually invited to, so I appreciate everybody letting me speak at all. Um, I think that the amount of charity that we give to one is based on their body of work. I can give some charity to Andrew Clavin's positions uh, on his broadcast this last week uh, because he's spoken so extensively about his faith. He's written extensively uh, about his faith. He's probably one of the most forthright people uh, that I've ever met. You know, you can't get him to not tell you exactly what he thinks. And so I have a broad context with which to judge the things that he says. I have a broad context to understand the things that Ben says. Um, and, you know, Nick, to the extent that you've, to the extent that you've said things like when we come to power, we're going to kill the perfidious Jews. It's very hard then not to keep that as context in mind when you say that you're not anti-Semitic. And I understand that, uh, I understand that, uh, you're a very funny guy and you make very, uh, subtle arguments and you tell a lot of jokes. Um, it's very hard after a certain amount of time, though, to believe that all of those jokes are jokes. And so, you know, to the extent that you had a bad experience with some of the young people who worked for me 10 years ago or nine years ago or whatever it was, eight years ago, you know, that's unfortunate. I wish that things had turned out a little bit different than they had. At the same time, I'm very concerned about a lot of the things that you say now. I think you take a very radical position. I hope when you say Christ is king that you mean it. Um, if I may, I'd, I'd like to, I don't know if Standis Owens wants to respond to that. Um. Yeah, I was just, I don't want to take up all your time, uh, Jeremy, and that's fair enough. And I, I hope you don't see this as me, like the aggrieved, like bitter guy or what, obviously I, I forged my own path. I did my own thing. I, you know, I mean, to, to the credit of what you guys say, I, I kind of did that, didn't I? You say, oh, well, start your own thing or whatever. And I, I basically did that. So it's not sour grapes. I'm just trying to um, tell people where I'm coming from. Because I think a lot of people, when Candace Owens says Christ is King, they bring my name into it. And they say, oh, is this Groyper, Fuentes stuff? And, you know, to your point about saying killing Jews or whatever, um, again, I think that's, I would say the same thing to you about that, that you would say about Clavin, which is that, you know, what I said is that clearly, and I think you might even agree with this, although you probably shouldn't say it because it would, you know, it would be bad. But what I said is that I think there really are like devil worshipers involved in the government. I think they are really sadistic people. And I don't mean like super magical conspiratorial stuff, but I mean, I think there are some really 
some really sick, sadistic people that run the country. And what I said is that when you get these people who believe in this esoteric stuff and they really are devil worshipers, I said, these are people that you got to give the death penalty. I said, when it comes to like when I see these um, drag artists at the Padres thing and they're doing a, a dance on the crucifix and stuff like that, to me, that's satanic. And I think you got to draw a line. You got to introduce some some blasphemy restrictions. And so that's what I I mean, I know they took it out of context said, oh, we want to kill everybody. And the media was so happy that I said in a rather unfortunate way. But if you play back the clip, that's what I said. Even the Holy War thing. I know Inspiring Philosophies here, he reviewed my uh, rally where I said, you know, we're going to make them die in a Holy War. Uh, very similar. And, and I will concede this. Okay, I really shouldn't. It's not smart of me to do this, but I tell the truth. I will concede something to you, Jeremy, and to Andrew and to Adam, although I shouldn't. It's bad politics. but. You know, I really don't I really don't hate anybody and I love everybody. And my vision for the country is for everyone to have rights and dignity and to not be treated with cruelty. And if you watch all my speeches, I say that in all my speeches. So it is there going back years. But I very I do understand that when you make jokes about Hitler, I understand that Jews who are already have a history where they feel like they're attacked and this kind of stuff. I understand why then you don't have a lot of, uh, as you say, charitability. You know, they they are not, uh, they don't feel like they can extend charitability towards me when I say, hey, I love you guys, but, you know, you make these edgy jokes. So I get it. And I think that um, as I get older, I'm trying to reel that in. Because, I mean, you got to remember, I got my start when I was 18 years old. Ben Shapiro was attacking me when I was 18. Uh, call me an anti-Semite. I was under attack by Reagan Battalion and Benny Politzik around my 19th birthday. Uh, and as I've gotten older, I've I've come to, I think, moderate myself a little bit in some ways. Some would say the opposite, but I, at least internally that's happening. So I get where you're coming from, but my strong position is just that we got to put America first. America's got to be a Christian country. And as long as guys like Shapiro cannot say Christ is king and they, they refuse to say America first, I think it's notable Ben Shapiro has never uttered those words. Um, I don't think they should have leadership in America. So, I mean, people can say, well, I don't like what you say about this and that. I don't like that guys like Shapiro cannot, will not say Christ is king, America first. I think they forfeit their ability to lead. I, I would never listen to somebody that can't say those things because, I mean, those things are really the foundation of wisdom which is the love of God, which, as you say, goes through the sun, as we all know, can only go through Jesus, and oikophilia, which is, you know, your love of your home, your love of your homeland that you reside in, not some other homeland. So I just want to get that across to you. It's kind of a strange circumstance that we're talking, but that's how I feel yeah, about and it. And I'll say this, Nick, that I listen to your show quite often. I think you're one of the most talented people out there, and I'm very concerned about some of the things that you're saying. I wish... Uh, I think that you're a very gifted communicator. And so it's hard for me to imagine that you consistently miscommunicate uh, some of these things. And I'll, I'll hope that I'm wrong and yield the floor back to all the people who actually came on here to talk to each other.